Romans 12. Today we'll begin at verse 12. Amen? Amen. The Bible reads, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continue in instant in prayer. <clears throat> Distributing to the necessity of saints, giving a hospitality. <clears throat> Bless them which persecute you, bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceit. Still want to talk from the subject, they just trying to control you. They just trying to control you. Father God, I pray now you look to the world, look to the end time I'm done. You understand the man too is assignment way more than I do. Allow me to preach your word and not my word. And let the hearers hear what you have to say. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now last week, we talked about love and what love does. Well, the rest of this stuff you can only really do if you have love. Love in your heart. Love for your fellow man. Love for your fellow believers. In Bible study, we're in 1 Corinthians right now. 1 Corinthians starts with talking about the division, how the church has been divided from people siding with different factions within the church or different ministries within the church and, 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 and keeping us divided. But love is supposed to tie all of this stuff together. You know, so that we love one another in spite of. You know, we're not so much focused on uh, not loving the person. You know, we love the person. We speak to the condition, right? Amen. We want to make sure that we treat the condition. And we want to make sure we diagnose the condition. Well, love is that overwhelming factor that allows us to set down. All right. Because if us don't set down, of course, we're going to do what we believe to be right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily what God believes to be right, but what we believe. Mm -hmm. And so when you love, we know it goes beyond. So when we get down into these next verses, it says rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. Well, that means that we are going to celebrate joy. Yeah. I mean, how many of us love to celebrate together? Celebrate with folk. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, does anybody get up in the morning and, and share a birthday or anniversary and say, I'm just going to be by myself? <laughs> I'm just going to rejoice that I'm here. No, you want to share. You want to share the joy. You want to share the love. You want to know that you got people in your life that you can help share the milestones of your life. You know, when your children graduate, you sit there and you send me an invite, look, look, let's, Rev, you know, if you can be here, we'll be here, you know. Um, I went off to church at school. I, I, I actually thought it was all love. <laughs> I went to their school for the prayer breakfast. I was looking to see my girls and I saw a chair. I was like, where the rest of my girls? But the pandemic that messed that up as well, too. Everybody's divided and everybody's separated, you know, and I, I was a little disappointed. Why? Because I wanted to see my girls. You know, I was getting my hug from Gracious. I was going to figure I can get me another. I was an extra hug. I was going to get Gracious. That's an extra hug that day, you know. So, but we want to share in life. Nobody wants to travel this thing by themselves. That's why people get so caught up in trouble as well, too. You know, because if somebody won't share, if the right people won't share, the wrong will. Right? So your, your love should be an extension of the people that you know, the people that you meet, the relationships that you, you foster to help make yourself stronger. You want people around you that will help encourage you, not discourage you. And in the church of believers, should not we find that? But yet somehow we find division. We find a split. We find folks siding up with others. How is that possible in God's house? How is that possible to begin to speak stuff out of your mouth that's negative toward people that's in the sanctuary? And just because you, you try to put their condition on them 
That's not what God wants us to do. Because if we all do that, if we all treat everybody, well, you know, I don't like them, I ain't gonna hang with them, I ain't gonna talk with them, I'm gonna sit on this side, and vice versa, is that church? This is a house where loving is supposed to happen. Amen. Right? Not all this gossip and, and bitterness and, you know, uh, and, and trust me, man, it's, it's too much for God's people. Because what happens is when we get caught up in all of this bitterness, how can we focus on ministry? You know, you got folks who will say, well, you know, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to give because of this or because they on that committee and I, I don't want to be a part of that committee because, you know, I don't like the way they looked at me. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't like how, how Rev spoke about that particular subject. He, he know I might be dealing with that issue. He probably, he talking directly. No. When you come into this house of worship, I don't care where you go to worship, you should come in with expectation of being filled and lifted up. But if you come in with a negative spirit already, you got an issue. And so how in the world can we uh, rejoice in hope and yet we're not bringing any hope? All right. I'm serious, man. When I come up that road, I, you know, I, I have an expectation. I have an expectation that I, God is going to show up. I have an expectation that whenever I finish preaching, somebody got what they needed that morning. Amen. You know, I have an expectation that, Lord, I, I, I just need you to keep me keep safe up and down these highways. Y'all who traveled, you know, you know how dangerous these highways are, especially 83. You know how many times 83 gets shut down? You know, and I'm sitting there and I'm driving up this road, you know, and I'm looking at things around me. Trust me, there are things I see, but there's more things that I don't see that God keeps me from. Amen. You know, and so I, I want to be able to get here and rejoice with you guys. I want to see your smiling faces. I want to know your story. That's why I look testimony. Testimonies lift me up. That's why it was so great to have testimonies out in the park. Yeah. You know, let's change up the service for a minute and let's, let's hear from laity, let's hear from folks that God has blessed because that's just as much as a message as me standing here preaching. Yeah, that's right. People wanna know what God is doing in your life. Yeah. Rejoice together, rejoice in the hope of knowing that God is, sees us. Amen. You think about that? He sees us, this holy God, sits on the throne, but sees us. Every part of us, he wants to know how, he wants to know everything about our day. He wants us in his life. He called us, he handpicked us. Those who have been born again, you have been handpicked by God to one day inherit the kingdom of heaven. So if you understand that, how in the world can you keep negative thoughts in your mind or let your tongue lead in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, a, a negative conversation. Let's stop it. We gotta be better. You can do better. We can be better if we allow God to work through us. Patient and tribulation, now this, so what does that tell us? There's gonna be some trials along the way. You, you, you. I don't care how holy you think you are. Well, I don't care how much of a saint or old saint you think you are. Yeah. Tribulations are a part of life. Yeah. Rev going through a tribulation. Yeah. Anytime you lose a loved one, is that not a trial? Yeah. That's something that, 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 that hurts to the core. Yeah. But then that's where church family comes in. Because yeah. even though you know, you're hurting we're able to comfort some of that hurt. Yeah. Amen. The only way we can comfort even more is if we had to camp out in your house, Rev. <laughs> we got, because what? Because people don't, once again, they want to rejoice in hope, right? Yeah. Well, how, how do you tell somebody that there's hope and yet they're missing something? Yeah. You lose a child, a loved one, a child. It's hard. Where's hope in that? But yet, as a church, we should come, be able to come beside them and help lift them up until God takes care of the rest of the situation. 
And there's a, their mind has to change, but if there is no church around, if there's no one to help you through your trials and your tribulation, then you are going down quickly. That's why so many folks die after a loved one dies or they commit so because they feel like they can't go on. And so if you don't have the church, if you don't have your brothers and sisters around to help support and help lift, then the trials that we go through, we in trouble, y'all. There's no way on God's green earth we can possibly make it. But on the other end of that, or the other spectrum is, the person that we're helping has to be willing to receive that help. And we can't be rushing them to understand something that they're going through. We have to lift. So those tribulations, those trials, those things that we go through, they're going to come. The Bible never said that you weren't going to have all. You get saved, all will be well. All right. I ain't never read that anywhere. Life will get us at certain times when, and you know what? The funny thing about it is life will get you when you are on a high. You know, you think, all right, I'm good now. I done figured this thing out. Well, as soon as you think you done figured it out, boom, a bomb drops. And then you back at square one again, talking about, well, Lord, I thought you said you loved me. I thought you said you cared. Now, can you imagine going through that by yourself? That's why I try to tell folks, when you get when, when there's something that's going on in your life, you go to the hospital, you're not feeling well, let us know. We want to come beside you. But if we don't know, ain't nothing that we can do. And then, a lot of times, when we don't come beside you, then people get attitudes. Because we ain't been there. But yet, they ain't invited us in. You understand how this whole relationship thing works? You know, rejoice together. Cry together, love together, die together. All those things is if, if, if I'm going to be a part of the body of Christ, because we talked about the body too during this session, right? How do you think the body responds when it gets hurt? It's concerned. It wants to fix the hurt. Why? Because the body don't want to what? Hurt no more. Well, it's the same thing with us physically. You know, when some of us is hurting, all of us should feel the pain. Right? That's why I pray for you guys on a daily basis. I pray for your, your health. I pray for your well-being. I pray for your children. I pray for your marriages. I pray for, for all the things. And even the things that my mind can't remember, I'm still praying for them. Why? Because God's in control and the Holy Spirit knows. It knows my weaknesses. It knows my limitations. But I keep praying because I want to see everybody do what? Well, in the midst of our struggles, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of all those things, that's why the Bible declares continue instant in what? Amen. Man, you can't live without prayer. Yeah. That's why the love motivates us. It drives us. The person that you love, you're going to pray for. What about the one you don't? Now, it seemed like to me that it shouldn't be an issue with brothers and sisters in Christ, but yet it still is. Yeah. Pray for one another yeah. on a daily basis. Constantly remain in conversation with the Lord. Why? Because the more, think about this. You may have never met a person before in your life. And you meet this person for the first time. And now you guys have a conversation every day. And as every day goes by, the closer you get to this individual. Until y'all become thick as thieves, right? That's a relationship. Well, how can you accept Christ as your Lord personal Savior and never talk to him? How can your relationship get stronger if you don't have communication with the Lord? You gotta talk to him. In the morning when you wake up, talk to him. Don't just talk to him when it's time to eat. He's like, well, the only time they need me is when they get ready to eat some food. <laughs> you got all day to talk to the Lord. Talk to the Lord on your drive. Drive to work, drive home. Talk to the Lord while you're working. If you can whistle while you work, you can certainly talk to the Lord while you work. Talk to the Lord when you come home in the evening. Because first of all, you wouldn't have got home if it wasn't for the Lord. Talk to him while you're walking through your house, doing work, whatever the case may be. 
Keep prayer continuously. Understand because every time you pray, you are building a relationship with God the Father. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will lead you in your conversation. Folks say, well, I don't pray because I don't know what to pray. Stop talking like that because you talk without knowing what to say. <laughs> Talk to him. You figure this thing out. You don't have to preach or, 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 or pray like, like Reverend Miller. Reverend Palmer. You know, nobody, God's not calling you to do that because you ain't Reverend Miller and you ain't Reverend Palmer. Amen. You are who you are. Amen. People say, well, I, you know, I don't sound like that. Stop it. Open your mouth. Talk. To the Lord. I told I would tell my son all the time, Jared, Jer open up his mouth. Be a voice. Because if you ain't a voice, guess what? You ain't being heard. If you ain't being heard, you can't cry about what you ain't getting because you ain't being heard. The Bible says they have not because they what? But before you go ask, you need to know what his will is. Because then when you do ask, you're asking the wrong stuff because you ain't had a conversation with the Lord, but you're asking for something that he ain't even about to give you. And if he does give it to you and you don't need it, you're about to be in trouble. Pray. Understand how God operates. So you know how to rejoice in hope. You know the tribulation is coming because you are always constantly in prayer. You are, prayer. you are in prayer when you're rejoicing and you are in prayer when you're in tribulation. Somebody's going to need that. Somebody's going to need your relationship with the Lord. Because somebody's going to see you praying through storms and they're going through a storm. And they're going to want to know how you make it through this storm. Well, I have a relationship with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I know he'll never leave me nor forsake me. I know he's always with me. I know he's in the right hand right now. The Father make an intercession for me. So I believe, even though there's a storm, I believe it's going to be okay. Why? Because God got me. Build your communication. Build that relationship so that no matter whatever comes, You'll be fine. Then it goes into distributing to the necessity of saints giving the hospitality. There are those who are in need. And we have. If we have. Let's help one another out. Stop looking for something in return all the time. That's a worldly way. You know, I, 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 if I get what I'm going to get, then you ain't got nothing. When you see a need, fill it. If you got something that you ain't using, you don't need, but somebody else can use it, get rid of it, give it to them. I know this because see, when you have a relationship, you know when folk need, I, I can see they struggling with some stuff. You know, I got this, but I'm not really using it. Or I got extra funds. If I can help them out, let me help them out. And I don't want to hear the whole thing, yeah, well, you know, uh, you know that. I had to work for that, so we all work for something. But if you're gonna give it, I see it all the time, if you're gonna give it, give it. Don't give it with no strings attached. That's not the body of Christ. And I'm not just talking about the saints of God, even the, 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 the world. There, there are people in your family, people that know, if you wanna show some love, extend to them some grace and some mercy so they can see who Jesus is. Because they're like, well, you know, the Christians they only look out for one another. How we can look out for those who aren't able to look out for themselves. That's why Jesus died for all of us. The Bible says hate what is evil. Yes, hate the evil stuff. It says, but all at the same time to love what is good. You have to know where you're fitting. You have to know your place. When you know your place, you're able to do great things beyond your own ability. <clears throat> and then you will be amazed at how God blesses you in return. See, folks think that if, if, I, if I give somebody this, if I lose this, then I'm going to be without something. But you don't realize that God can replace whatever you just gave. Amen. But at the same time, we ain't giving to get. This ain't no Ponzi scheme with the Lord. You know, I'm, I'm not trying to climb this ladder. Well, Lord, I didn't gave them that. Now, you know, the ladder was at the 500 million. Can you give me that? 
You know, we, 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 we put strings on stuff. You know, we, we want to attach everything. And then here, here, here's the worst part, which is so non-loving, so non-church, so non-relationship oriented, that if, if, if we give to you, We're going to want that returned. We want it back. That whole give to get got to go. That whole give to get got to go. Just give. Stop worrying about what you have or don't have because God already knows. You ever notice how sometimes you get a blessing but it don't make any sense because the blessing you don't really need? You ever notice that? I know I certainly have. I got a blessing, like, but Lord, I, why, I don't need this. Because it ain't for you. You the conduit to move the blessing on. Sometimes it falls into your lap because you know what to do with it. I can bless others as God has blessed me because I realize this is not mine. It's like playing basketball, right? Everybody looking for the shot. But the shot ain't always good for you. And so they do what? They pass the ball. Pass the ball for what? To find a better shot. Somebody's always in better position to receive that blessing. But the problem is, because we don't have a relationship with others, we keep taking a shot. Then we miss. Tell them, I thought I had no. Stop thinking about yourself. Because see, when you keep taking a shot, I, I'm watching my son's basketball team the other day, and they got some pretty nice point guards, but the problem with the point guards is they don't know how to facilitate. They think they got to dribble the ball and take the shot. Well, the problem is with that is you don't make your team better. Amen. You keep thinking you got to carry the whole load. Show me in this word where you got to carry the whole load. And so these point guards, they need to have a relationship with the other players so they know that, hey, look, I'm going to need you to be in position so that I, when this blessing comes to me, I can pass it on until we find the right person with the right shot who's open for the shot, the blessing. That's how we should be as church folk. Pass it on. Pass it on. We can't keep holding something because a lot of times what happens is the one who needs the blessing, they still go unblessed. Pass it on. Build a relationship. See, you know people. See, you come into the church and you know people by their faces, but you don't know them no more. Like, I know some members better than others. Why? Because some members make themselves more readily available to meeting me to talking to me, to sharing with me, and others don't. And so they may think, well, you know, he only care about them. No, the problem is that you have to open up the relationship. I'm one, you are many. And so when you want to draw closer, you gotta open the conversation. As you open the conversation, your relationship grows what? Stronger. Now you know how to learn and to lean on Rev. You need to know how to call when you, you're not feeling well. You're doing something that people always say, Rev, I always I hate to bother you. Let me just tell y'all real quick. You can't bother me. What's my job? All right. All right. That's like you've been at your desk at work and somebody said, well, look, here's a poor, I hate to bother you now, but you get, uh, I'm at work. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. As a pastor, this is what I do. My job, I realized that my job is a 24-7 job. Mother folk don't understand that. I realize that. I know I can get a call at all hours of the night. Now, if I'm light sleeping, I might get the call. I always got my phone by my bed. <clears throat> but I told y'all before, don't call me at 3 in the morning talking about I just want to say hey. <laughs> you might find the worldly side of me. <laughs> but if you got something that you can't deal with, and you need to talk to the pastor, call him. Give me a minute to get my thoughts back together. But ultimately, my point is to you is, I am here for you as much as you allow me to be there. Amen. Your relationship with me can be just as strong as someone else's if you allow me in. So a lot of folks, that's why a lot of people go to big churches. They can, they can get lost in the process. Let me help you out, this ain't a big church. 
<laughs> you can't get lost in the process. But you can be here and I still don't know what your first name is. Why? Because I still deal with so many people and when names come, especially when new members come in, you got to let me know. You got to remind me. I never forget the time a woman said, Rev, I, I, I just want you to call my name. Because she asked, Rev, what's my name? I mean, Cole busted me too. I, I'm not the pastor, but I was one of the preachers and she enjoyed my teaching and stuff like that and she was always praying for me and always encouraged and always talking to me, but at the same time, I never knew her name. You know, so she asked me, what's my name? I'm like, sister? <laughs> She said, every now and then, I want y'all to hear this, just call me by my name. My name is Mary. I never forgot Mary's name anymore. Why? Because she made it a point. She wanted me to know who she was and to make sure I acknowledge her. That was a moving thing and it's where how God told me as well too because Trust me, I, I am not good with names. So I see a lot of folks, you know, I can know you and still stutter on your name. Especially, I gotta, I'll be, Lord, which one? Give it to me quick, give it to me quick before I leave me. You know, but the reality is, when you do something to make me remember, that's how much you care about the relationship. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we gotta make sure that we understand in hope and, and tribulation, continuing the prayer, the scripture of the saints, giving the hospitality, we're supposed to be the most hospitable people that's out there. Why do you think when we have our, you know, regular sanctuary, even here, why do you think I don't ask for offering? It's unhospitable. Yeah, but the church, they always talk about money. Okay, <laughs> let me flip this thing again. When you go to your home and you have guests over, you're asking for money? Or do you provide everything they need to feel at home, to be at home? I, you're coming into my house. So my house should be able to prepare. I should be hospitable. The responsibility of this church belongs to its memberships. And even when it comes down to that, I don't fool with y'all. I teach you. I show you the way. We got tithing baskets. As long as you do what God has blessed you with and you do what you're supposed to do, we don't have to have no money conversation, especially not doing sanctuary. This is worship time. Amen. I'm not trying to figure out how, how much did we get? How, no, all right, close them doors. We ain't going nowhere until we get 50 more dollars. Some, I feel like I'm out to give me 50, give me 50, come on, give me 50, give me 50, we ain't going nowhere until we get 50. 50 dollars, 50 dollars, who give me 75? 75, 75. I tell you what, I want you to wave it in the air. Get your money in the air and wave that offering because God has blessed you. That has no place inside the sanctuary. Even in the Old Testament, the Jews, the Jewish, the Hebrew nation took care of the money before they went into worship. Why? Because once you come into worship, all you need to do is what? Worship. We got to get it right. Not to mention some folk don't have nothing. And so what happens is you create this environment of haves and have nots. That's not what church is. Folks come around, walking around because they can't sit in their chair because they're all looking at them, they all stingy, they tight. They ain't gonna give nothing. So then they end up walking around with a crumbled up dollar and put their hand halfway down into the basket because they don't want nobody to know. Remove it. That's not hospitality. Especially guests, why would you sit there and worry burden guests? With something like that, when, when, when guests understand, when guests know what the situation, you, you, you don't realize how much guests may give at the, same, uh, at the mountain, mm -hmm. simply because we don't ask. But they feel, a, they want to, well, I want to bless the God, because you know, you go to places, you got to, I used to have money in this pocket, in this pocket, in that pocket, because I ain't know how many funds they was going to have. <laughs> you know, they got the missionary fund, the benevolent fund, uh, I need a dollar fund. <laughs> I'm like, how many offers y'all got? I need to know, man, because I'm, I got a certain amount for everything. I don't want nobody looking at me. Or well, then they're going to pass the plate. Well, that's, 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 that's. See, these are all world techniques. This is not a spiritual technique. 
This is so when you see that plate coming, you just can't pass it without putting something in it, or you just really an heathen. And you ain't putting nothing in that. Ah, oh, yeah, you know how it is. No, I don't know how it is. I just need some new shoes or something. Hospitality. You don't pass no plate when they come to your house. You feed them. You let them sit on your couch, enjoy the place, and then at the end, you thank them for coming. And they feel blessed. That's church. That's why the Lord told me. That's why we do what we do. Because we always want to be hospitable in everything that we do. We can't just say it and not live it. You understand what I'm saying? Given I bless them with first go down. Hey, woo. Woo! How much time I got up there? <laughs> bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Now, this can be related to both the church and the world. The church and the world. Believers, because believers, believe it or not, believers is they just somebody that came out of the world. They still got some of the world in them. Sometimes them saints of God, you, you want to cut some of them. But the Bible says to bless them as persecute. So this has to be a, a perspective, a mentality, right? You have to understand that, okay, Lord, I know sister so-and-so got on my last nerve, but please, Lord, help her. <laughs> I'm going to pray. I'm, I'm going to still go talk to her. I'm going to still engage. I'm going to still do it. Because I don't want, I don't want to block my blessings because of, I, I'm caught up in your mess. I'm caught up in your circumstances, your stuff. I don't, don't want to block my blessings. You know, because people get attitudes real quick. Right. Ain't that right, choir? <laughs> the choir know they get an attitude. <laughs> How come she's singing again? <laughs> Act like I can't sing, I can't sing. And yeah, you probably can't sing, but you want to sing. <laughs> and, and so you get an attitude. And you put all that stuff together, and you so you up there, you in the choir, and you got an attitude, and you supposed to be praising God. <laughs> this is my story. Uh -huh. This is my. Ain't got no joy on your face. <laughs> you just mad. I could sing that song better than they can. <laughs> no. We got hate. No, stop it. You want God to bless you, then you wonder why you ain't being blessed, but yet you ain't blessed nobody else. You sitting there creating confusion, then when you're dealing with the world, you think the world supposed to know what they know. The world don't know no better. They don't have the presence of the Holy Spirit. So a lot of times when the world cuts you out, because they don't, they going through some stuff. They ain't even figured it out, but you supposed to know, that's not that person, that's the devil that's up in them. So I'm not going to treat that person like the devil. Remember, I'm not going to treat the person. I'm going to treat the what? Condition. The sense of I'm going to pray that that demon come up out of that person because I know that's not you. I've seen you operate before. You obviously going through some stuff. It's like even when it comes down to us believers, we go through things. And a lot of times what happens, especially husband and wife, we go through stuff. And then we take stuff out on one another because we know we can. But the reality is the other spouse should know that's not who that is. So we need to talk. We need to sit down and have a discussion because we can do better than that. All that stuff comes into play. We are children of the living God. Our disposition should not be the same as this world. And so whatever floors the world should not be able to floor you. It can knock you down for a second. Why? Because we are human. We're flesh. But I'm quickly reminded when I get knocked down who I belong to. That's why that prayer continuously. Because see, when it, see when, what happens is when you have that relationship with the Lord and you pray continuously, when that evil come to you, you recognize it. You know, when that hate come your way, you recognize it. And you're like, I'm not today. I'm going to be bigger than the situation. Even though that requires you to take a back seat. Because none of us want to take a back seat. We want you to know you're wrong. We want you to know that we see that you're wrong. And we want to straighten you out. You know, because that's what we do. We don't want to take the back seat. 
That's like Christ saying, well, if you, if, you, if you are who you say you are, come down from the cross. He could have said, oh, okay, I'm going to show you. <laughs> Start snapping his finger and everybody went to one flame, two flame, three flame. I'm trying to tell you, if Christ thought like us, we wouldn't be sitting here right now. But he loved us. Yes. That copy love that we was talking about. He didn't look at us. He looked at the condition. He died for the condition to save us. Yes. So we can do the same thing for our brothers and sisters in Christ as well as in this world. He talked about not hanging with the world. So you got to understand, too, if you want to be a voice, you can't hang where you used to hang. You can't do what you used to do because as long as you do what you used to do, you'll never be free. You can't sit there and get off a crack and then go back to a crack house I'm going to save them. Amen. Especially not by yourself. I just told you, we can't, we can't even travel without the, the church itself. So if you go out with the full force of the church, you'll be fine. Why? Because you're surrounded by the saints of God. You're going by yourself on a crusade. Let me tell you, before that day is over, you will have a pipe in your hand. Because the condition, remember I told you, it don't leave. It gets treated. As long as you follow treatment, you'll be all right. So don't go and think you're bigger than what you are because none of us are. We are a church. We are a body. Do you see the hand just walking off with everything still sitting there? Where are you going, hand? Oh, I'm tired of y'all. <laughs> going to find me a new body. You don't. The hand cannot detach itself. You can cut it off, but it's going to stay right there. Why? Because it ain't attached to anything no more, and it has no power, no authority, no anything. So you cannot do stuff by yourself. Yeah. It's the church. <laughs> curse not. Bless them. Don't curse them. So when you sitting here and you hear Rev and Rev and came down your street, stop cursing me. <laughs> Bless me. Pray for me. That I will continue to love you and give you the truth no matter whether you like it or not. But the same truth that hits you is the same truth that hits me. I'm an equal opportunity truth giver. Because the Bible is. That's the only reason why I am. If I, if, if, look, if I allow my flesh to dictate what I do, I can easily set it up that way. But that ain't God. <laughs> it's not. You have to be who God has called you to be. And you can't be scared of those who tell you to be otherwise. There are preachers out there who get dictated to what they can preach and what they cannot preach. All because they're trying to get their paycheck at the end of the week. I could care less. If I don't get the paycheck, I just go somewhere else and work. Don't matter to me. I know what God has told me to do. If he told me to stay here, I'll just stay here. Why? Because I got to believe that he's going to take care of me. And if I'm with the saints of God, then I know it's not an issue. Amen? Amen. You got so many people out here, so many pastors out here working this thing, you know, calling them by vocational pastors because they do the church and they do, but the only reason why they buy vocational is because they don't make enough in order to live. Those who make enough in order to live and are still working are now greedy. I hope y'all hear me that if you're listening online. <laughs> God has to call you first and foremost. If God calls you, he will allow you to tell you what you need to do. And let me just tell you, there is no way you can be viable, bivocational working with God unless God has said, okay, here's your situation. But if your situation does not persist for that and you're able to be uh, 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 provided the means to be able to do a, a, a full-time pastorship, then you should just go to the book of Leviticus. The priests. The Levites, they had one job. Minister the gospel message. Take care of the law. Lead the church. Lead the people. As simple as that. You know, and their families were taken care of because they were taken care of. See, it's hard to have a pastor wake up at 3 o'clock in the morning and he got to be somebody at somebody's job at 6 in the morning. Because then you might just get cussed out. You understand what I'm saying? But when his family, is, his needs are being met, he's able to do what he has to do. 
that's something that all of us need to get to. So sometimes your churches might be too small, and you're starting them, and you're growing them. We understand that. But as you get to a certain point, you got to know when it's time to let go, and God will tell you, and you can't be sitting there like, but Lord, I don't know. I mean, I left a good government job. Why? Because the Lord told me that's the only reason why I left. Was I scared? Absolutely. Was I nervous? Absolutely. Did I consult other folks? Absolutely. Why? Because I gotta go. Through, I gotta do my due diligence. I gotta make sure that he's telling me to leave and not just I'm tired of being here. Because then I'll be in more trouble. <laughs> Fool around with church if you want. <laughs> you and your wife be homeless. <laughs> you better know that God has called you. If he ain't called you, then you better stay your butt on that job. So there is a part to it when God says move. When he told me to move, I knew it was time to move. After I went through all the process and I had all the confirmation, everything I needed to make sure it was not me, it was him telling me to move, I move. It's like this new home. I'm moving because he says move. Because whatever it is, he knows something that I don't know. And I'm moving here for a reason. I'm just excited about to see what the reason is going to be. I understand some preliminary stuff, but I still have no idea where God is taking us. But I'm excited. <laughs> I'm going to enjoy the ride. Why? Because I'm walking with him. Amen? Amen? So bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. So once again, we got to cry with one another. We got to rejoice with one another. We have to be able to engage one another. We have to build relationships so that we are in life together. Amen. If not, why join the church? Yes. If you don't have nobody that you can lean on, in times of trouble or in times of joy, what's the purpose? Is this another social club? I come in, like if you come up in there and you, you hear the word and you leave, but you don't know nobody in your congregation, I'm, let me help you out. Find another church. Because obviously this one right here is not for you because you don't spend the time to invest in getting to build relationships so that you can share your life with others. I don't want to be in this thing by myself, y'all. I need your prayers. I need everything that you guys have to offer that God has given me, and I pray that you need everything that I have to offer that God has given to give, give to me to give to you. That's that symbiotic relationship. We are intertwined one with another. Why? Because we're in this thing together. Amen. Wouldn't it be great that they... When that day comes when we all in glory and we see the whole mountain. <laughs> Just then, you know, we hear the mountain, mountain over here. <laughs> you know, you know, we all be in glory, but you'll be, you'll know people. You'll know this is my church member, this is my brother and sister in Christ. Wouldn't it be great just to see everybody there along with your family and your friends? Well, let me just tell you, it's all predicated on us on how we live our lives. Do we live in hellish? Or heavenly. So, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Be of the same mind one toward another. Mind that high things be condescend in the middle of the lower state. Be not wise in your own seat. We'll get to that next week. Amen? Amen. Understand this. The world is trying to control you. Not God. You got free will. Everything that I've read is not forced upon you. The world tries to trick you and thinking that we're forcing you to do stuff that you really don't want to do, like you're some kind of robot. God gives us free will, free choice. And so if we are in him and we have the ability to make these decisions, then let's start making better decisions. Let's block out the world and open up the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Doors of the church are open this morning.